Hello guys, so welcome back to a new video. So today I'm going to be talking about the highest rated episode of Fear the Walking Dead and that is season 6, episode 1, The End is the Beginning. Now like, I will edit in a time where I start the video, but before I want to give context and say something very, very important. This episode should absolutely not be the highest rated episode of Fear the Walking Dead because it is not. It's actually, a, it, I don't want to say anything yet, but it should not be the highest rated episode. I think the people that reviewed the Ericsson era somewhat didn't understand it. They didn't like it. They didn't get it. I don't know. But there are episodes like Wraith that are better than this episode. Like the season two finale, Wraith, the season three finale, like other episodes, there are ones that are loads better than this that should be in the 9 out of 10s. But, no. And because none of the episodes are rated, in my opinion, correctly, and they're just minimalised a little bit, this is an episode that gets put as the highest. And, I mean, maybe this might change with Season 8. There could possibly be an episode in Season 8 that will change this. Maybe for the lowest rated episode, there'll be a se an episode that changes that. But... For this moment, we're going to be talking about Season 6, Episode 1, The End is the Beginning. Alright, so I'm going to talk through the episode and give my opinions on certain parts of it. So we start off meeting a bounty hunter. And he basically gets a call or a radio message from Virginia. And Virginia basically wants Morgan dead because following Season 5, Virginia wanted Morgan dead. As did we all. We all wanted Morgan dead, I think, because Morgan's unbearable. But sadly, Morgan didn't die, and so Virginia is now calling this bounty hunter to go and kill him. We then meet Morgan following the events of season five, and Morgan's just in a right state. And walkers do not seem to be engaging with him. I don't know why. I don't remember if it gets explained or if we just have to deal with it. But the, the episode doesn't feel as though walkers wouldn't kill Morgan, but they would just ignore him in a moment. So there you are. Um, and Morgan's in a shop getting supplies and he meets this person called Isaac and Morgan is really annoying. He just doesn't want anything to do with Isaac. He just doesn't want to talk to Isaac and, you know, like, he just can't be bothered. It's not even that he can't be bothered, but he just doesn't want to get to know Isaac at all. And then the bounty hunter comes, Isaac kind of gets him away and Isaac then takes Morgan to his little tree house that he's built. And then the bounty hunter returns, knocks it down, and Isaac and Morgan are able to escape using his car. They go to some kind of area, woods or whatever, they have a little talk, Isaac explains further in detail about what's going on, and Morgan just dis Morgan d eventually decides to help him and um, help each other. And so the Isaac takes Morgan to the little dam area where the secret place is, where not even Virginia will be able to find it, because Isaac we'd found out in the episode, was one of Virginia's ex-soldiers. And there's a massive herd, and Isaac says he's going to go the long way around, and because the walkers are avoiding Morgan, or not dealing with him, Morgan can just go and help his wife. And anyway, they end up getting in a fight, and the walkers and Isaac and Morgan, the walkers all get cleared, and then Isaac and Morgan can get into the area. And then we find out that the baby's born, and everything's all right. And then, at the final parts of the episode, the bounty hunter returns to the area, and Morgan is going to surrender, he's going to die. But what ends up happening is Isaac gets involved, Morgan is, like, confused. We find out that Isaac was actually bitten in the fight to get into the dam area. And then Morgan decides to kill Isaac, and it's a shocking moment. Morgan hadn't killed in ages, not even in The Walking Dead. It was a huge moment. Morgan kills... And then we wake up in the morning when Morgan passes out. His bullet has been taken out of his chest because he was shot in season five. The end of season five, we find out that Isaac had died. Morgan puts the bodies and um, the bounty hunter's head on the side of the road. Virginia comes by, is dead happy at first because she thinks it's Morgan. For her to realise it's the, her own bounty hunter. She then gets on the walkie, says to Morgan that you're going to be careful you need to be careful. And then Morgan says that Morgan Jones is dead. And the episode finally concludes, once again, showing the end is the beginning on the submarine. 
that's basically what happened in the episode. I guess a long synopsis of everything that goes on. Um, I hope that was all right. I don't know. But um, so that's what happened in the episode. And I did kind of share some of my opinions rather than just tell you what happened. And the first one that I kind of want to talk about is kind of a negative, is that Morgan was still annoying. Now, we know that Morgan is annoying, okay? He has been in The Walking Dead. Some people don't agree from The Walking Dead's perspective, but at least in Fear the Walking Dead, like, everyone can agree that Morgan is a joke. And he's usually really annoying because he won't kill and his ways will make everything harder. But this episode, he actually kills the bounty hunter. And it's not that that we find annoying. It's just the fact that he doesn't want to get situated with anyone. Like, Morgan, even in season, like, three of The Walking Dead, like, can go through this. And it's... I actually remember watching it and thinking that Morgan Jones was dead good this episode. I think he's better than what he was in, like, season four and five. But, like, Morgan's terrible in this episode. I'm sorry. That is my opinion. And it's... In my opinion, it's true. Like, I get that he's better. But there isn't... It's not... I can forgive Morgan for this. If this was one era, like, oh, everything that happened in season five went to the collapse. They had to forgive into Virginia. You know, Morgan is dead annoyed, quite rightly so. He doesn't want anything to do with Isaac. He's shot, and you know what? He just kind of wants to die. And he's being annoying, but at the end of the day, I can completely see his situation. What annoys me is that even from season three of The Walking Dead, he had his clear mode. Now that, again, that's an era. And... The Walking Dead Morgan's more bearable because each time he's going for an era and he's not constantly annoying. But Fear the Walking Dead, even until season 8, the episodes that I have recently watched, Morgan is annoying. He's terrible. He's unbearable. So I can't sit here and say that season 6 Morgan was actually good because he was justified in his actions and everything. Like season 8 Morgan and Padre, I could say that he's justified in feeling the way that he is. But how many times am I going to justify it? How many times is it going to be put into a situation where I have to say, Morgan was right to act that way. It's fine. Morgan's great. I absolutely love him. Like, it, I, I can't keep, I'm not going to do that. I'm not going to do it for him. And then that's kind of my biggest negative about the episode. But it's not just that. I can't really fault the episode itself. But none of it's really true. Like, Morgan doesn't kill Virginia. Even though, literally, from season five, it's the goal to kill Virginia. And then we meet people like Sherry later on in season six. We meet um, more people that just want to kill Virginia. And not even Morgan does that when he gets the chance. This episode does not even stick true to itself. And this is why I don't like season six as much as other people do. And, you know, and it's why I had to say my little context and disclaimer that this is not the best rated episode. It's not. It's actually... I, I've just gone through the negatives, so I'll go through the goods before I give my final opinion. But at least on the negative side, it's not good. It really isn't. It's really frustrating and annoying. Though, after all of that, I will go through my positives. And I actually have quite a few. So the first one is the end of the end is the beginning. I like the shadowing for Ted, the foreshadowing for Teddy. I like how Teddy just doesn't appear like that. I like how there's little traces of him and his kind of idea and scheme. I think that's quite good. I think that, you know, we look back to the second half of season six, even season seven and say, well, it's not like we never saw this coming or we never have had any hint of it, you know, because some things can happen in a TV show and just happen. But if it all weaves itself in with each other, like even if it doesn't, that the stories don't mean anything, but we get a little hint of seeing kind of, well, you know, there was a group of people there right in the end is the beginning. This was, this is a long time thing planned. So when we get to the end of season six, where this is kind of the main focus, it's like, well, it's been coming all along, you know, and even if the characters didn't know about it, we knew about it. So I thought about my positives and I wrote down a list just to make sure that I can mention everything that I want to mention. So Morgan does kill. I know I kind of already said that, but the fact that Morgan does kill is a good thing. Even if he's annoying in the episode, I can still accept that he did kill. It's revolutionary. It's actually great. It was nice to see Morgan put his foot down. And even if it doesn't last for this episode alone that I am judging it on, it was great to see that Morgan killed and even shot uh, the bounty hunter in the arm earlier in the episode. So I think that was pretty good. And I think that, you know, if you do want to see Morgan probably, at, you know, a ruthless point, you'd probably be looking at The Walking Dead to some point in season six. But in terms of Fear the Walking Dead, this is probably arguably the most ruthless he's been in terms of his own violence. So I thought that was quite cool. Um, I feel bad for Isaac. Isaac does die in the episode. 
um, as I already mentioned. And th I do feel bad for him. They definitely made him a good character and quickly built him up to be someone that you liked and you wanted to know about. And when he does die, I do feel bad for that. But if he wasn't done well, then I wouldn't have been able to say that. So I do respect that Isaac um, was done well enough for me to feel bad for his death. I liked how this episode had a smaller cast. I thought it worked well. And I thought for the story that it was telling, the smaller cast was good. Um, I don't always like those kind of episodes, but I think it worked well in this situation. But I always have to think, you know, are the writers really that competent or was it just the pandemic? <coughs> which, don't know which one probably forced that change, but all I'm saying is I thought that it worked well and it wasn't like there were people forced in it that shouldn't be. I thought oh, each character had a purpose and intervened and whined with other characters of the story. And um, this episode looks nice as well because season four and five had that horrible camera filter. You know, season four, when we saw Madison, the kind of flashbacks, that was nice. And then anything after that to season five had this disgusting, grainy black filter. And then season six got rid of it and it, it looks nice. And really, it just feels and looks like metaphorically a breath of fresh air like it really does. So the episode really did do some good things. And even though I probably sp spent more time complaining, it's more about Morgan, you know. And I've already made a video complaining about Morgan himself. Um, and I know it's not fully about the episode, but even with the other stuff I've seen, I can't give Morgan a pass in this particular episode because he's already had too many chances from season four and five. And even for me, The Walking Dead, for, to, to like to give Morgan um, like a card, a, a fast card or whatever it's called, to just let him, give him a second chance and say, well, Morgan was justified in this episode because I don't think he was. I thought he was really annoying and I feel like he just put his finger up his ass and didn't really do much. Um, yeah, so this episode, I don't know, I've complained a lot about it and I feel like I haven't really spoke about the good stuff, but it was, it, it was, it was a good episode, it was, you know, even Morgan had his moments, um, and I do believe I would range the episode anywhere between a 7.5 and an 8.5, I know that's a huge wide range, you know, but I, I think it could go anywhere in between. I feel like on a bad day, if I'm really annoyed, I could give it a 7.5. I feel like on a good day, I might, I could maybe give it an 8.5. I mean, it, it got 8.4, so, you know. And I remember watching the episode thinking about what I'd give it, and I thought, hmm, I don't see what's terrible about it. So I probably could see it an 8.5, but it wouldn't be any more than an 8.5. It wasn't revolutionary. It wasn't amazing. I wasn't sat at the edge of my seat dead engaged, but it was still, like, a very good episode. Um... I do believe that Wraith is one of the good episodes. I'm going to do this again, um, but it would be with each individual season, and then we will decipher which is the actual best rated episode and which one fans are just clouded by this breath of fresh air that they're going to flood to give this episode huge praise. But that's it. That's what I've got to say. I am a little bit you know, angry against season six. I probably, even though there's only been three episodes at the point of me recording this, I probably like season eight more than this because I just don't really like season six. It's better than season four and five and all, but really, is it justified? Is this episode justified to be that good? No. Um, I have been very critical, but I appreciate you all watching. Please tell me your opinions, because I've been... My opinions of this episode have been off the rails. Like, I have not just been, like, dead simple about it. Like, I have been so mad and confusing. But I would give it anywhere between a 7.5 and an 8.5. So it still, you know, would be a very good episode. And it wouldn't be an episode that I wouldn't watch. I would definitely... If I had to pick out the episodes when I was... If I was to rewatch all of Fia, I would watch this one. I think it's a pivotal episode with Morgan in some way. I don't know, because he kind of doesn't change, but... Again, that's not the episode itself's fault, and what the episode did show was promising. So yeah, thank you for watching. Please tell me your opinions, and I will see you all next time in a bit.